my fellow flight sim enthusiasts. Hope you had a great holiday. I did. Of course, I didn't get a lot of work done on the uh, X737 project for Air Manager, but uh, Santa did bring me some uh, goodies in, in the name of some money that allowed me to uh, go shopping. And I had a deal that was just too good to pass up. A uh, at HH Greg, they had a Seeky uh, 4K television that I thought might serve as an overhead monitor for my uh, 737 project. So it was only $229. I couldn't pass that up. And uh, what you're looking at now is uh, it's not mounted. It's just laying on the floor. I wanted to test it out to see how it worked. And uh, it's quite remarkable. Now, I designed the uh, gauges so that they would... Uh, completely fill a 4k monitor with a 10 uh, a 2160 width 3840 height and you can see of course the after overhead panel is not even done yet but I wanted to give you a, a look at these and maybe I'll zoom in on a few of these things and show you uh, how they work uh, I don't have touch control I'm uh, sourcing out a uh, monitor for that purpose and uh, that'll be uh, available hopefully uh, in a while. I found one, a Chinese made monitor that's just perfect. But uh, this, this is a 21, or 20 and a half inches is the viewing, viewable area here that you see on the screen, uh, which is about 78% of the actual 737 full scale. And uh, I'll put my hand down here to show you the relative size. You can see it's pretty darn close. Uh, it should be great for touch control. All the controls will be easily accessed without interfering with any of the others. Uh, it, uh, I'll just give you a, a look at some of the panels. For example, here's the electric meters panel. And I'll take the mouse and operate it uh, in lieu of the uh, touch control. But you can see, see how that works. We'll take the battery switch and raise the cover and turn it off. Uh, this TV is not the greatest as far as it's not uh, not going to have the greatest quality, but it, it I'll tell you, the viewing angle is great, and that's one thing I was concerned about because it's going to be mounted overhead. The other thing is I'm concerned about is how I'm going to mount it overhead. But you can see that uh, that all the, for example, the, uh, the press the test and all the lights work. Uh, you know, I can turn the, the bleed switch on here, and you'll see the duct pressure come up. Uh, can test uh, overheat test here. So yeah, it's it looks it looks pretty awesome. I think uh, the quality of the uh, graphics. If I really get in close here, you can see, uh, despite the effects of the uh, the camera interfering with the different sync rates, I'm getting a little bit of flickering there. But that's obviously not really there. But you can see. Uh, what the panel looks like. As I said, 78% full scale. I think that's more than enough. I calculated if I wanted to do a full scale, it would take a 50-inch monitor, and that's just that's just too much too much to hang over my head. I, I, I think this will be perfectly good. From the right distance, it'll give the same effect. Of course, being a pilot who flew in the airlines, I really think it's important to have, um, you know, the gauges, if you can, mount it in the correct position. I mean, I'd love to have a complete switch cockpit, but I like the idea of this uh, virtual cockpit on screens because with touch control, it operates. I mean, you look in the right direction, you reach in the right direction, you operate the gauge, the switches in the right area. Uh, you could be great for procedures training or anything like that. So it's very realistic, but it's a, a fraction of the cost. So. That's a real advantage of going with the touch screen. Now the frame, the, the, as I said, this cost about 250 with tax for this monitor, and I for about the same price I'm going to get delivered. I think it was 227, a uh, touch frame. Now the touch frame is a 4K touch frame, so it should have the resolution to handle this with no problem. Got real good reviews on it. It's uh, plug and play; doesn't require a driver, and I'll have to figure a way to mount that with some uh, glass on top of this, and then hang it over my head. So it's going to require some modification. It may be a while before I get this thing up and running. But when I do get the touch screen and get it operating, I'll try to come back and show that. 
I'm going to start working on some of the uh, forward panel gauges too. I've done some of them before already, but I'm going to try to make them uh, to match this set and, and keep building this out. And, uh, one thing I will try too is my little stick PC. If you've seen that uh, Mego that I have, it's a little it's a little computer that runs Windows 10, and I'm going to try plugging that into this uh, panel because the frame rates aren't that important on this panel. Nothing's moving fast. Even the needles that that are moving, uh, you know, it's really not going to be noticeable if there's a even if it operated at 15 frames a second. Uh, obviously, with a simulator, you know, every day we look at at the real world out there and we could spot when things aren't aren't moving right but uh, looking at gauges uh, not that big a deal and these gauges aren't most of these switches aren't animated anyway so they're just when you flip when you flip the switch you're just going from from one uh, picture to another so there's no smooth smooth animation there uh, the main thing is that it gives us a, an overhead panel with all the switches dials in the right locations that can be uh, manipulated without having to rely on the mouse and uh, we can use all our assets for that beautiful X-Plane 11. That's another reason you haven't heard from me for a while in regards to the X737 is I got, got started playing around with X-Plane 11 and I'm very very impressed with what it's it's providing. Uh, anyway that's about it. Let's see if I can show you this from a from an angle. Even at, so you can see even at a pretty sharp angle that this inexpensive monitor does a pretty darn good job. Obviously, you don't get the three-dimensional effect because it's a it's a flat image they're looking at. But but as far as uh, uh, you know, the angle for viewing, it's really not bad at all. Really not bad at all. And uh, I think I made a lucky purchase there. Uh, I had read that it had some lag problems. They supposedly fixed that with a firmware. Now I don't know if I have that, but I don't de detect those right now. Uh, and we'll see what happens as I, we go forward. Anyway, thanks for checking in. Subscribe if you'd like to follow this along as I continue that journey towards trying to build a, uh, a glass 737 where everything's glass, including, well, except maybe the MCP and uh, some of those glare shield instruments that are used all the, the gauges that are used all the time. Uh, as uh, Air Manager develops the ability to provide uh, hardware support, hopefully in this coming year. Uh, we'll uh, we'll look at incorporating some a little bit of hardware, but I'm I'd like to keep it to a minimum. I like the idea that uh, I can fly a 737, and then if we can develop a set for the Airbus or any other airline, we can set up a generic uh, monitor set that can support multiple aircraft. Uh, and that's something you can't do if you have a, a hardware sim cockpit that's uh, devoted to one type aircraft. You know, I flew in the airlines for. 35 years and uh, I flew the same airplane every time I went to work uh, you know one at a time but but always flying the same type airplane so the last thing I want to do as I use this as a hobby in my retirement days is to uh, be stuck flying the same airplane day after day after day okay well, thanks a lot and we'll uh, we'll see you soon